So the focus still is on the state of the power sector. Mr. Victor Ndukaoba, who is the Deputy Managing Director, Afrinvest West Africa, joins me now on the program. A good morning to you. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you, Harriet. Good morning. So you listened to the conversation I had with Mr. Shoumi. Now that uh, the House of Representatives has piled down the, the power bond, and of course, uh, between last year and now, we haven't really heard much about uh, dispersal of uh, the 213 billion naira bailout to the electricity funds what other options do the distribution companies and the generating companies have now thank you for the question Harriet. um i think i think um fundamentally the the power industry um, requires so much more capital than was represented by the total package of the bailout um, from what I recall, um, like you just mentioned, 213 billion. If we were to convert that at the current exchange rate, official exchange rate of you know, just less than 200, is a little over a billion dollars. That is a fraction of what is required to even attend to two critical elements of the value chain. Um, one being the the transmission infrastructure, which obviously represents a bottleneck, and the other most critical element is the, the gas infrastructure. Um, um, having said that, I think um, what the bailout represented essentially was an attempt by government to provide um, um, capital um, that was um, fairly low priced, um, given the interest rates that it was supposed to attract, um, um, you know, in order to, to provide um, some, some, some buffer to, to the distribution um, segment of the value chain. Um, ultimately, um, if, if we did get our privatization right, um, the, that segment of the value chain ultimately ought to be the source of the entire cash flows supposed to service the value chain, including transmission, generation, and even pay for gas. Um, in terms of what the options are going forward, um, I, think, I think what we need to recognize is the fact that um, we need to have to come in. Um, if the capital isn't available onshore, meaning we don't have the capital in country, we've got to um, look outside for capital. The we'll question is, that. what we, we we'll get make to, capital We'll get attractive. to that. We'll get to that. Could you just react to this, if you will? Uh, Mr. Shomi alluded to the fact that uh, these distribution companies and generating companies have not been entirely honest, and which is the reason why the House of Representatives refused to support the motion for the raising of the 309 billion euro bond to give that much needed capital and finance to these uh, electricity firms. What's your take on this? Well, to be to be to be honest, I I, I can't say that that's um, a, I, I can't give a, a, a verdict on that assessment. Um, I don't have access to, for example, the the audited financial statements of these enterprises. They are private concerns. Um, if indeed the the assertion is that they've not been honest, the question is on what on what basis? Is it is it honesty in terms of of how much power is received, or is it honesty in terms of what the collections are? Um, within the disc, within the, the various um, you know respective honestly in terms of their financial statements. Okay, but I, I wouldn't know the source of that assertion. You know, if if he has been privy to perhaps the the financial statements, then that's that's a basis for him to make an assertion. But I can't I can't make that call. Um, if if if, if, at, if at all I would make any comments, that I think perhaps um, the discos were were somewhat shortchanged by virtue of the information that was provided during the privatization. And I speak specifically about the, the, the quantum of the losses that were booked as the reality. Um, and I can give you an example. Um, I looked, you know, we, we advised a couple of parties during the process, and, I, and we recall that um, on average, the, the, the aggregate um, technical commercial collection um, losses were, were total to about 30, between 35, between 30 and 35 percent for most of the discos. Um, the reality, for example, in a place like any good disco was, you know, closer to half of that. So if, if indeed you came in thinking you're going to buy a, a, an asset where you're going to be able to collect 65 cobble on every Naira, only to find that your collections are actually lower than 50 cobble, and that creates a challenge. Um, it creates a distortion in your own initial projections. Um, if you recall, um, the cash flows that come into the disco is what services the value chain, and that includes um, what effectively is the cost of power that the discos are purchasing from the bulk trader. It includes the cost of the discos investing in meters, 
in low voltage lines, whether on the 11 kV or the 33 kV, you know, lines, um, distribution infrastructure in terms of, you know, um, step down transformers, uh, as well as to pay the staff, and in addition, pay the cost of gas. So um, I, I think I think we need to be a bit more factual in assessing the power sector and recognize that the the, the issues are germane. Um, there are there are there are two critical elements we need to face. One is if we choose to keep is a unified grid system, we've got to then recognize that the 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 cost of power needs to reflect better the risks that are taken and the fact and also provide a return to the investors. Otherwise, we will keep talking about power and we will not have power. Okay, so before we get to that, seek efficient returns. You already started talking about it, raising capital, the much needed capital, the much needed fund. What windows should they be looking at? Should they be looking at raising uh, from domestic markets now, the Nigerian Stock Exchange, for instance, or should they be looking more uh, looking at uh, cross-border raising of, uh, of funds? I think it's not just one source. Um, ultimately, when you need capital, you've got to explore all the various alternatives that are available. Um, I, I think one of the things that we need to do first and foremost is to determine what is the actual quantum of, of capital required to get the industry to a point of stability. Because right now, we don't have stability. Um, and then on that basis, we then look at, okay, what is the capacity of the Nigerian Stock Exchange to provide all of that capital? Uh, my guess um, is that perhaps we may not be able to do all of that locally. Um, my suspicion, and I strongly suspect, uh, and you know, this is based on, on some of what I know, where um, given the, the quantum of capital required today, an estimate of somewhere between, say, three to five billion dollars, um, you know, within the next 18 to 24 months, uh, I'm not sure we can find that much capital within the country. We will therefore have to open up the borders to capital, sources of capital from outside the country. Um, whether they be you know pure pure vanilla equity or perhaps a mix or hybrid of equity and debt, um, but ultimately we've got to explore all sorts of so and there are a good number of them. We could look at um, ECAs, export credit agencies of you know um, some of the developed economies. We've got to look at um, some of the um, more um, you know um, um, endowed um, sovereign wealth funds. Uh, we've got to look at um, um, in some cases you know. Looking at some of what we've, like the, the case of um, the, the deal we've just um, supposedly entered into with China, um, where we can um, you know attract some of the investment required into into capex uh, in exchange for certain other trade-offs. Um, I, I think we've got to be open-minded. We've got to be creative about sources of capital, but with an open mind. Well, thank you so much, uh, Victor, for coming on the program this morning and uh, sharing your perspectives with us, Victor. Nduka Uba is the Deputy Managing Director at uh, AfroInvest West Africa. And that's it on today's edition of the program. The conversation continues on Twitter. And, of course, you can also send us an email. I'm Harriet Agbeni. Have a profitable day and enjoy your weekend.